think he's, Let's go get yeah, him. Yeah, I think he's up there. I heard he's on the second floor up here. They said he was to the right, so we're gonna. Yeah, they said top floor to the right. Yeah. All right. There we go. Oh my God. Yeah. Look at this neighborhood. This totally looks like some place he would be. Welcome back to the Shimmy Show. Hey, nailed it on the first try. <laughs> What's up, people? <laughs> Shimmy Cash here. Try doing that in a tiny space in the little condo here. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think I had enough space to do it. All right, welcome back to the show. I am going to be reading some of my comments and replying to a lot of uh, whatever, not even subscribers, just people who leave me comments on the channel. For those of you who don't know, I'm here in Thailand. If you look at my videos from a couple years ago, I'm in the same place. <laughs> this is my condo. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the show. If you guys don't know, I have a fascination with doing cartwheels now. <laughs> my girlfriend's taught me how to do them and... You know, for a guy that used to be 300 pounds plus, it's kind of a miracle I could do a cartwheel at 43 years old. So I'm learning my gymnastics and my tricks and um, still running, still doing my races. I miraculously made it here to Thailand despite all of the, uh, <laughs> the COVID policies and the expensive flights and the expensive fuel and whatever. I made it in time for the Patia Marathon. Yay, here's my... Uh, I meant to do this for many years, but I finally made it, yay. I did the 10K. I didn't win it, but I did pretty good for my age group or whatever. And I'm just happy to be here, happy to be alive, and just happy to be here. It was a long road getting here to Thailand, uh, and I'll delve into that a little bit later in the episode. But uh, for now, let me uh, just say thank you for supporting me throughout the years. Thanks for subscribing, following, watching my movies, buying my movies, wink, wink and supporting me however you do it. So if you follow along this far, thank you again. So I got my two computers set up here. I'm gonna be reading the comments and going over them now. I hope the microphone is uh, good and the setup works. If so, I'll continue on with it. And uh, here we go. All right, let's get into it. I'll start with the comments with like the most recent ones first and then go down the list because I really haven't done this in like a super long time. And I haven't even been in front of the camera for a long time, so. You know, bear with me. This might be a long show. All right, so let's see what's on the screen here. YouTube comments. Yeah, we'll just deal with YouTube today. Uh, before I begin, um, I <laughs> as people have told me about my channel and stuff, people say that my channel is often my, I ramble a lot and I, uh, you know, run on sentences, this and that. So if this is not your thing, please go to another, yeah, try to get the profanity out of this. Keep, please just go to another video. Uh, this is just how I process stuff in my brain in real time. So if you really want my feedback, listen. If you've wrote me comments, these, these uh, next few minutes are dedicated to you folks, all right? You guys take the time to write me, I'll take the time to respond. And I don't always have time to just give you my full thoughts. Often if I get a comment, I'll just peck away at it briefly on the phone and send it off. But for a more detailed response, I will get back to all you guys and uh, interact with you folks. Yeah, to a limited degree, of course. <laughs> time is money, whatever, but i am um, got a little bit of time right now. So chilling. All right, so where is, uh, one moment here. Let's go to the screen. Oh, hold on, I need the ball. <laughs> What's the show without the trademark exercise ball in the background? <laughs> As you guys can see, ain't nothing changed. As T.I. says, ain't nothing changed with the name on the mail. So, going through the comments section. All right, top comment on the videos. Who is this guy? This guy writes a lot of stuff here, by the way. Thank you, by the way, brother. You write a lot of comments to me, and I like interacting with people. This guy is goes by the name jf 2 Silicon V. three weeks ago. And he's got an icon. I even joned and joked about the guy this once. He has an icon of, like, I think it's uh, King Tut from Egypt. I assume he's a black guy from America. And I wrote the guy back saying, like, hey, man, you're probably, if you're a black American, you probably have origins in West Africa, much like me, like half of my DNA from my mom's side. West African from the Congo, uh, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Nigeria, places like that. You should really do a $39 DNA test to see where you're from. 
most black people, black Americans, are not from the region of Egypt or Kemet or Kemet or whatever as they call it and have nothing to do with the pyramids. I'm sorry. It's just a different group or I don't want to say race of people, but just you're not from there. You know, just like people here in Thailand are not from, you know, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, which are bordering countries. Each country is unique or whatever. Americans are not Canadians, are not Mexicans. They're all three different tiers or social groups of people. So be proud of who you are, wherever you're from or whatever. I don't claim Egypt because I am, have no Egyptian DNA, you know. So there you have it. This goes on the whole we was kings thing, you know, where I believe that it's a cope amongst black Americans to say, oh, we were once great, we built the pyramids, we did this and that, but not on West Africa's coast, no. No, you were bought and sold and human trafficked illegally, brought to America for slavery, picking cotton and tobacco and stuff like that. Accept it for what it is, it is what it is, and you know, you dominate the NBA and the NFL and entertainment and sports and rap, so can't build pyramids and do all that shit too, man. All right, so anyway, aside from that point, yeah, we was kings and shit. Not all of us were kings, brother. Okay, so he writes uh, this video. There was a video titled Why 99% of Guys Can't Be With Model Stripper Girlfriends. He writes, at first only the black women could clap, meaning clap their butt cheeks, and now white women can do it just as loud. The other ladies can't make thunderclaps. <laughs> I, I, I don't okay yeah you're probably right I don't know it's not even a question man I don't know what the fascination that black guys black American guys have with big booty women why do you want a girl with a big round basketball ass and this is coming from the guy that runs Totico's the Dominican Republic Spanish site where these girls have huge round asses you know I filmed a lot of them this and that but you know personally as I evolve in age and everything else that's not particularly my cup of tea, you know. Unless your dick's 14 inches long, I don't understand what the point is. You know, it's going to look like a pencil in comparison to a dick butt. But that is what it is. But more importantly, why do you want to see black girls' asses jiggle? I don't get it. Like, for me as an ex-fat man that used to be 300 plus pounds, I used to have a very big butt. I still have a very big butt. It's mostly muscle from running and stuff, hills and stuff, California and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I don't understand the fascination that black guys have with big butts and big asses. Maybe someone could explain this to me. I don't know. I think I find it kind of like primitive to a degree myself. But, you know, some people like that shit. I'll be happy to film it and sell it and promote it. Okay, hope that answers your question. And, yes, probably white women can do it too. As, as he says, white women can do it just as loud, thunder clapping. Make it clap, make it clap. <laughs> I guess it's entertaining. Uh, I'm not, that's just not my thing, man. So I'm probably the wrong guy to ask about that stuff. Yeah, really. I, I don't, for, for the record, I don't hire or video girls based on that criteria, actually. That's another niche that's, uh, I wouldn't say it's unpopular, but it's not as popular as some of the other stuff that I sell or whatever. So it's out there, but the, how could I say, the target demographic is not willing to pull out their credit card and pay for it. So, yeah. All right, next comment or question down the list. Where's the mouse? Okay, this guy calls himself Gaming Stoker, S-T-O-K-R, three weeks ago. He comments on a video theory, uh, that I titled JBW Theory Black Pill, Why God is a White Man and Why JBW is Law. For those of you who don't know, JBW is internet slang for just be white. It goes along the theory that, uh, you know, white people are at the top of many social economic hierarchies and pretty much make the rules. I made this video, uh, this was about a year ago, I suppose, where I had the children's Bible, which I have in the other room, where it shows everyone in the Bible's white, God's hand is white, etc. And our religious and social interpretations are based on that theory that, you know, there's this omnipotent man in the sky with a pink hand that created everything. Ironically created by the people that did the artwork and stuff like that. Now, we all know this isn't factual and there's no you know, big, great white lord in space, but that's the theory that I was brainwashed with as a child, and many people still accept that doctrine. Jesus Christ, their savior, and many of the Abrahamic religions, the people are all white or white-skinned. So if you look like me, you're the devil, etc. you're not good, you're negative, subhuman, ape, etc. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hey, I didn't make it up, man. Don't be mad at me. 
<laughs> I was thrown into the world like this. So the dude's comment, he writes now, um, reading from the screen here, so I'm looking up. Something to consider, there is a much simpler reason why blonde hair and blue eyes are looked at so universally as beautiful. It's the rarity. Rarity often equals value. The more common something is, the less value it has. Dark hair with brown eyes and brown skin are the most common features in the world. In a sea of brown, which is the world, blonde and blue stand out. And you make a very good point there. Yeah. Blonde hair, blue eyes are recessive traits. I would say that only 1% or 2% of the world's population has them. So therefore, they're considered beautiful. I'll be the first, probably the first black man on the internet to say that white girls are beautiful. By default, by birth, their white skin's beautiful. Uh, my ex-wife, she's white. Most of my girlfriends, past and present, have been white girls. Whatever, for a reason, I considered their skin to be beautiful, their features, their eyes, their bone structure, stuff like that. I would have to say that white girls excel in the beauty arena. That's why you see them on billboards, magazines, movies, and such like that. It is what it is. Now, on the other hand, you could say that uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that black people are ugly, but black people have other strengths and traits that are uh, more dominant. Athletic, strength, speed, power, agility, whatever. You know, I wouldn't want to be a white guy at the starting line of a race. Okay, put it to you that way. You'll be four fucked on race day. Okay, so every racial group and category of people have their own strengths or whatever, but usually black is equated with strong, fast, powerful, you know, power things like that. Even if you look at sports, black men mostly dominate power sports, basketball, football, whatever, even women, black women dominate the WNBA, etc. They just seem to have higher testosterone or more you know, the stereotype is actually strong black woman. You very rarely hear people say that black woman's beautiful. Well, you'll often hear them say, oh, she's a strong black woman or strong black queen, things of that nature. Those are adjectives used to describe black people. And I would have to say that black people were chosen or sold, marketed, and trafficked by white Europeans or whatever to the Americas for the reason of their strength. Their physical strength is their greatest, uh, um, I guess, power or whatever, I suppose. And you can't knock that. That's not something to be unproud of. Who wouldn't want to be faster, stronger, whatever, whatever. I'm just saying that if you are a black girl listening to my show right now, then uh, focusing on becoming a beautiful person or a model, or et cetera, might not be the best career path for you. It would be better for you to focus on your strengths, speed, power, strength, and et cetera, et cetera. Not everybody in the world can be a model. Not everyone in the world can be an athlete. Not everyone can be a long distance runner, but if you use your DNA to an advantage, you can uh, achieve great things in the world. It's better to focus on your strengths than try to fix all the chinks in your armor is all that I'm saying. So, okay, now I've offended people by the second comment. Next comment. <laughs> Welcome to the Chevy Show. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting raw now that I'm in Thailand, I know. Haven't had my weave yet. All right, next comment. Kasparov, the god of war, I heard he died. Oh, everyone dies, man. Shit. He's referring to a black man in the video with the stripper or whatever. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, there's a video of a black guy that has like two strippers at a, looks like a birthday party or something. And the guy, guy grabs his chest like, oh, and the two strippers show up or whatever. You know, it's a, it's a typical thing. You know, if you're, a, if you're an older gentleman, you know, balding, so they call a quote unquote sub five guy, pot belly, et cetera, whatever. If you have a little... <laughs> basically a girl that looks like somewhat of a stripper or a sex toy sex doll a lot of guys can't handle this they can't handle the visual and the thing in front of their face you know I'm not from this boat because I'm usually the guy holding the camera and all that shit so I'm very much so desensitized to that but you know it's just what it's the reason why most guys go to strip clubs and stuff like that and I don't I've been like two times in my whole life and it's just not my cup of tea or whatever the other thing I noticed too is like um even here in Thailand and other countries where men go to monger and stuff like that, there's a very much so imbalance between the, the, uh, the way the guy looks and the way the girl looks. Here you'll see mostly uh, older, older white guys mostly going with Thai girls who could be their granddaughter or daughter's age. You know, you got a 60 year old with a 20 year old, etc. Huge age gap, couple generations, whatever they wouldn't meet up under normal circumstances. It's a little bit more than JBW, as you can call it, but it's very imbalanced. So uh, since I'm fairly in shape myself, I don't necessarily view these girls as being like superior specimens of humanity. 
by far. You know, the best advice I could give you guys is to get in shape yourself, add some value to yourself, do some things to improve yourself so that you actually look better because people do judge you how you look or whatever. Then you won't be so susceptible to, you know, a girl in heels and a tight skirt or dress or whatever. What the hell? You know, whatever. <laughs> it makes me no difference. Going back to the original guy who mentioned about uh, the girl with the butt clapping and whatever, you know, um, if you were an athlete yourself, if you had six pack abs, this and that, and you were in better shape than the girl herself, then it makes you question why would you pay for her time or for her services, etc. when in theory you probably look better than her in the mirror. Okay, yeah, think about that. All right, next comment, I'm rambling. This is fun. <laughs> Be careful when you write me comments because I will call you out and talk about it. All right, next comment, Raphael Shigley. Does someone know what happens at the end? He's talking about the cartoon movie Area 88. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, there's a Japanese manga anime cartoon. It's called Area 88, one of my favorite series of all time. In America, it was called UN Squadron. Come out when I was about 13 years old or something like that. No, actually it actually was released in 1989, but I started playing it when I was a teenager or whatever. Video game where you fly airplanes and bomb stuff, basically. <laughs> you know, I like, I like flying airplanes and bombing stuff in games. It's one of my hobbies. So... Uh, it's one of those shooter type of games or whatever. So there's a cartoon, an anime, it's about two or three hours long. If you guys look at my channel, you can watch it. Uh, the soundtrack is great, the movie is, or the cartoon is great, the series is great, and it's uh, cool shit. So yeah, there you have it, Area 88 UN Squad. And I often have their music playing for the video game while I'm running and racing. For those of you who don't know, it's very much been a part of my life, yeah. Okay, next comment, breezing through them. Okay, this guy, I think he calls himself Hawkeye Hawks. Okay, uh, he's responding to a video I did about the rules book by Ellen Fine and Sherry Schneider. Okay, he writes me, I met a woman and I couldn't work, I couldn't work her out. She seemed to be working to some invisible backstory. I now know, she is a rules girl. Now I can play the game hard, lol, but now I have the upper hand because I have a copy too. Okay, so um, yeah, this is actually one of like my top five videos. I did it, Jesus, man, it seems to, to 2015. This was about six, seven years ago, I think I did this video. I'm actually sitting on the front porch in one of my houses. I purchased a copy of this book that I bought off of Amazon, my ex-wife had. It's like, a, it's like one of those books from the 90s, like how to get a man, how to catch a man, stuff like that. And I called her out on that and I wrote a book about, uh, not a book, I wrote an episode about it and just did a video about it. Like if you have this book in your house, you might be in trouble, whatever, you're being gamed or scammed or something to that effect. So a lot of people, they, uh, they reply to this video because I guess a lot of men have been like more or less the victim of the book or whatever, but it's just another book. At the end of the day, the bookstore is full of books and I doubt the information would be effective 20 years later or whatever, but I am maybe a case study for the book or whatever. You know, but at the end of the day, if you are a good guy worth having and keeping, a girl will do whatever she can to keep you around, I suppose. It should be, it, you should actually take it as a credit to yourself that the girl has actually valued you enough that she doesn't want to lose you, that she's even willing to change and alter herself temporarily to, uh, to just keep you in, you know, in touch and stuff like that or whatever. But again, huge red flag or whatever. So um, yeah, that's not really a comment, dude. I don't, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm reading this comment again. Your girl has an invisible backstory. I don't, I don't know. Why do you deal with mysterious people is what I want to know. You should know about people's past and stuff like that, of course. If they're not disclosing everything to you, yeah. I don't know why you even want to be with them, dude. Why can't you just be with somebody that wants to keep it real with you is my question. Is, are you, are, are you like that desperate or is there like a shortage or... You know, maybe your first girlfriend, first relationship. I don't know the answer to all these things, but whatever. Okay, there are more important problems in the world, by the way. You know. All right, next problem or the next comment. Uh, African child sword bearer. What a name. <laughs> Play the Ethiopian harp with nature sounds better than frequencies. I don't know what an Ethiopian harp is, man. 
No, I, I only, the instrument I used to play is the violin. So, yeah. Oh, this guy's responding to the videos I did about the rain videos and the meditation videos. I actually hired a Fiverr guy to create those. For those of you who are wondering, let me unflex my legs here for a moment. Um, yeah, the, um, these like hour long videos where you just see like the car burning or the, the rain falling from the sky. My logic in putting those videos up is I need to extend my viewer time and I watch these relaxation videos while I'm working all the time too, but YouTube requires that I have 4,000 hours of watch time and 1,000 subscribers before I can go live. So I need to get my watch time up and my hours up, so I put these meditation, calming, watch the rain fall for an hour type of videos. If you guys were wondering why there's a series of like a dozen videos where there's just the burning car and the rain falling. So yeah, there's a logic behind why I do these things. So. Yeah, I'm not going to play any Ethiopian harp. <laughs> I wonder, you know, here's the question about this guy and the pyramid or the Egypt guy or whatever. What is it with you black American people that have a fascination with Africa, but you've never been to Africa? Why don't you get a passport and go fly to Africa, see it for yourself before you start wanting to become African? Because you very much might not like Africa. You might get there and they might not accept you. They might look at you a little foreign or whatever, or they might steal from you, or they might rob you, jack you, et cetera, because you're the quote unquote rich American to them. So yeah, I mean, Africa's all right. It's just another country to me. I've been a couple years ago, I went to Morocco. It was all right, but I still have the same thing. Just a bunch of hustling people that look like me trying to sell me t-shirts and counterfeit goods and stuff like that. There's just people are people trying to make a living and it's just another place on the map. So I don't, glorify it even though it's you know where my dad's from and stuff like that so yeah all right enough about the fantasy world of africa next video next comment i should say uh let's see da -da 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 -da. i can see my by the way my mom is on here she spammed about 700 comments or whatever there'll be a separate video about her <laughs> can't wait for that one um the next guy, this J2F, JF2 Silicon V is writing again. He writes about, do Puerto Rican girls do use black guys for revenge? And he writes, Asian ladies doing this now too. Well, probably, you're probably right, bro. Um, it's, from my experience, just me, me speaking for myself here, uh, girls of other ethnicities often use black guys, such as myself, to quote unquote mog uh, their ex-boyfriend or men of other races, M more or less because they say that black men dick mog other guys, meaning that black guys have thicker and longer penises than the average man or whatever, non-black man, I should say. So it's more of less like a stunting thing or whatever that often you might get the case where girls are like using you as a transitionary thing to just show that they still have the ability to get a man or something like that. And whatever. Take it for what it's worth. If you're a black man, you should be happy about this. You have a higher, uh, what they call SMV, sexual market value than pretty much the average guy or whatever. If you're, you know, you it, put it to you this way, unless you're white or black man in the West or pretty much throughout the world, you have very limited dating options. People that are of East Indian and Asian descent, Native American, whatever, they more or less have to date within their own pool or rely upon arranged marriages. The reason why you see so many, like pretty much most people from in East India, most East Indians, Bangladeshis, Pakistanis, Arabs and Africans all look identical because of arranged intercultural marriages amongst the same racial groups. There's very little race, race mixing going on. And because of that, for generations and hundreds and hundreds of years, it's not so much a positive thing. Uh, there's very little diversity in their gene pool, so everyone looks the same. The reason, the reason why all Indian and Jewish and whatever type of guys are all like five foot one, five foot two, they've never actually mixed their racial pool with white or black or taller, bigger people. So they just remain little runt-sized people that are, by today's 22, 2022 standards, look very much uh, devolved or whatever from the rest of the population. So girls consider this now. And, you know, I consider this with my own kids, actually, by the way, you know, my kids are like six foot two, six foot four, and lighter, whiter than me, et cetera. And I, I kind of thought ahead for this or whatever, but it's like, had I had kids with a girl that was um, of any Asian, Indian, whatever, 
native type of background or whatever, my, my children would have been much shorter, et cetera, and whatever, because the girl would have been shorter and stuff like that. And that's not necessarily a great thing because this world is very unkind to short men, you know. I'm, I tell people I'm five foot nine. I'm actually closer to like five foot eleven, but you know I like to underestimate stuff because I wear these little thin soled running shoes or whatever. So if I had Air Force Ones, I'd be six feet tall, etc. But <laughs> I don't. Uh, I like to underestimate stuff for whatever on people, for numbers or whatever. But I'm just saying this. This is a factual thing. That, uh, if you're born a man and you're under this like six foot threshold, you're pretty much undateable. Nobody would want to date you, have kids with you, et cetera, et cetera, because girls are smart. They're, they're thinking ahead and they don't want their kids to be little runts and stuff like that and mogged and dominated and stuff like that. So on the flip side of things, you might look at things from the Southeast Asian, uh, as they call it, C-maxing perspective. Like um, you see a lot of white guys here with Asian girls. I would actually say it's almost default that uh, Thai, Filipino and you know, mostly Chinese, Japanese girls would favor to be with a white man, to having white skin and having children that are taller than them. But the problem, I wouldn't say the problem, but um, the issue that comes up, if you look at a lot of the uh, so-called inkwell forums on the internet, these children become the new generation of ER, or the Elliot guy that was uh, famous in California or whatever. It's like, if you're a Asian man, half white, half Asian, uh, that's kind of, it might, it might be good if you're in the Philippines or something like that, but if you're in the Americas, it's like these guys are pretty much in the inkwell category for being undateable, for being of a shorter stature and all these other kind of things that, that actually matter in the real world. So yeah, you know, I don't want my kids to be up on the inkwell forum and stuff like that, so et cetera. Yeah, you get my point. <laughs> I'm rambling again. I hope I made the point valid. So let me go down the list of comments again. I uh, hope that answered your question, bro. Next comment. A guy calls himself some guy. One, two, three, four. Two months ago, he comments on my video, talking does not cook rice. That was a good video I did while I was in Vegas where I was actually doing ride share drive, not ride share uh, what do they call the delivery app stuff? I was working for all of the delivery companies actually. Shipped, Spark, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub. I'm running with two phones running simultaneously. I'm delivering three, four packages, meals, and stuff all at the same time to supplement, supplement my income, right? Due to the rising fuel costs and expenses and stuff like that and whatever, my hand was forced or whatever in Vegas. So if you guys could imagine me delivering pizza and chicken and Walmart packages and a Porsche, that was reality for me just a couple months ago, not even that long ago actually, I did this for quite some time. Very brutal to go and work my job in the daytime then have to go work another job in the nighttime. So yeah, delivery gig drivers doing this in 110 degree heat in Vegas, whew, there's, no, uh, there's no longevity in that and you guys wonder why I'm in Thailand now. Before, either, either my car or my body or both are gonna break down and I know when things are I know when it's mathematically impossible to win, so that's kind of how I ended up here right now, back in my own condo where I have my expenses under control and life is good once again now that I have things managed. So, yeah, so anyway, I made this video at the particular time, Talking Does Not Cook Rice. That's the one with the burning car if you guys play it back. And this guy writes the comment, quote unquote, talk doesn't cook rice. And he's quoting me in the video actually, quote unquote, you can solve a numerical problem with the alphabet are some pretty good ones. I'll toss one your way. The things you own end up owning you. Good luck, cowboy. <laughs> You're very correct in that, but you know, I, I don't wanna give up my Porsche, nor my Ducati, uh, nor my land, and all my other properties and stuff like that. So that's why I'm forcing myself to work up into a certain point, of course. You know, it, it gets to a point where it's like, okay, is it really worth it? Yeah, we'll, we'll weigh this and see how it goes or whatever. So anyway, yeah, that, that's a very valid point in my video, talking does not cook rice. If you need to go and do something about your problems, if you have a number to solve, a debt to pay off, or someone you owe money to or whatever, you need to go and service that debt without giving them lip service, basically. You know, if you, I basically made the point of saying that you can't solve a numerical problem with alphabets. You can, you can only fight numbers with numbers. There's no negotiation about that shit. So that's just how I am. I have a number, I have to go and service it. 
et cetera, without lip service. So I wish more people would do this in the world, but they don't. You know, I'm at the point where I don't owe anybody any money. My, my debts are pretty much clear. I just have a few cars and things of that nature to pay off or whatever. But as far as individuals, I'm not indebted to anyone. And that's a great feeling. You know, if you owe somebody money right now, if you guys are watching this, you better go work to pay that off as quickly as possible because it's not cool to owe people like that. Not cool at all. All right. So next comment on the list. What we got going on? Damn, this guy's writing again. He's like my number one fan. JF2 Silicon V writes, video on black women inkwells, please. Um, yeah, I'll do that in time. I don't really feel like doing that right now, man. I'm enjoying myself in Thailand. The last thing I want to think about is black women that can't get a date. Often, just to answer your question real quickly, black women can't get a date because they're pretty much at the bottom of the SMV hierarchy. Um, black men are actually near the top because they're just ranked as more desirable for a lot of reasons. Black women, again, as I had mentioned earlier, they have this, you're fighting a lot if you're a black woman, actually. You know, it's like the beauty standards are against you, okay? You would be much better off to focus on your athletic, dancing, singing, whatever talents that other races of women do not have, per se, than to focus on trying to become beautiful because for you to try to go and lighten your skin, straighten your hair, get hair extensions, and do everything you can to look like a woman on the billboard or a magazine, it still makes you come across looking like a counterfeit kit car. You know what I'm saying? If you have to literally glue and iron, you know, a Malaysian woman's hair onto your head and you do all that yakky, rimy stuff, I see them doing this in the salon is how I know this because they're getting their... You know, they buy their hair in the bag and press it on and whatever. My hair is my own hair, by the way, except for the, uh, the bangs or whatever where I touch that up at. But it's my own hair, you know what I'm saying? But at least my hair is my own texture. Do you get, you're going to put a, a texture of another woman's hair on your head. My logic is why wouldn't the man who wants to choose you just go and get the girl the hair is attached to? You know, hair is a very big thing to me. I like, I like to wash it, pull it, and stuff like that. And uh, for many black women, hair is like kind of off limits. And that's a major beauty thing or whatever so yeah it's a tough road being a black woman I actually have to say unless you choose to focus on again your strength speed athletic dancing whatever type of talent and quote-unquote melanin abilities if you're not doing that if you're just trying to be you know a Cosmo girl forget about it there's a reason why there's not that many black girl models or uh, porn models porn stars and stuff like that is because people just are not actually searching for them there's a reason why I'm not like super duper rich because for many years I have a website with hundreds if not over a thousand videos of basically black and Spanish Latina girls. And it's not that the girls are ugly or anything like that. They're just people worldwide are not searching for them in the search box, you know? So that's the, the super uphill battle that black girls have to fight with, you know? It's like only a small niche or a certain very mind small minority of men of other races are actually seeking them out etc so they more or less have to be forced to pretty much date other black men in their community you know there they would be no different than east indian women or you know women of other cultures that are in like a range type of situations or whatever their latitude is not so great that they're able to pretty much date outside of their race because they're not in high demand so even if you're like a top tier upper echelon black woman, you know, to say, say you're like your Candace Owens or someone like that, then it's going to be very difficult for you to ascend or whatever. And that's a tough road to follow. You know, I'm sure a lot of black girls might actually follow the channel. My heart goes out to you, this and that, but that's the best advice I could give you to improve your life quality or whatever. Focus on your strengths and, you know, don't try to be a white woman because you can't be. Just like I can't be a white man, you don't see me trying to do that. I'm Ethiopian. I do what I can. I go to the starting line, I dominate, and I run. I be the best black Ethiopian I can be. So I suggest for you to be the best black American woman that you can be, more or less, for the, for the best results. Otherwise, you're, you're going in circles. And, you know, black women spend a fortune, a fortune on their hair, clothing, and this and that, all to no avail because they're just not, they're not just looked at as viable by a lot of people. And that's the factual truth. So... You know, don't blame me. It's just the way of the world, okay? I can't control what people are putting in the search box. I wish the opposite was true, then I'd be very rich and their movies, etc., would be a lot more valuable or whatever. There's a reason why I don't particularly hire um, black models, like very rarely. There's only a handful of them on the site in recent years, is because 
I don't make my money back from that. Basically, I don't like to throw money away. You know, that's what it boils down to. It's why you don't see that many black girls on the cover of magazines and such like that. So there you have it. Be mad at me if you want, but that's the facts and the numbers and stats don't lie. Okay? <laughs> All right. I'm making enemies today. That's okay. I can't make everyone happy. Next comment. Where's my mouse? All right. Get a little comfy here. All right. La mejor, Jack Wilson. La mejor parte es ver mons. Okay, no Spanish on my channel, please, sir. People don't understand that shit. I do, but most people don't. All right. Uh, what else we got on here? Got an ascending aesthetics. Two months ago, he's writing, it's over, it never began. You're totally right about the burning car video. He wants more 20 minute videos. Okay. I guess I have a fan. Whatever, cool. All right, I think that guy might be from like the looks maxing community because I do I do read a lot of those looks maxing type of videos or whatever. Yeah. Anything else they're writing on here? It looks like I've pretty much dealt with most of these comments or whatever. Um, yeah, it has. These are all going back for a couple months. So that will be the ends of my comments here. Let me go ahead and end this video here. And on my next video, I'll be talking more about Thailand and things that I have not uh, gathered and finished up here. So I'm Shimmy Cash. Thank you for watching. If you guys have comments, please leave them. I will get back to them in due time. Like I say, it might take me a couple of months or whatever, but I do care. If you take the time to write me, I will write you back. All right. Thank you for watching. You guys can hit up my link tree in the description if you want to support my work and stuff like that. And that's all I got to say. Stay tuned for more great stuff and more videos. And I'll try to do my best to narrate a lot of my tourist uh, travel videos and stuff like that and add subtitles to them soon. And more cartwheels for sure, too. <laughs> again, thanks for watching. I'm Shady Cash, the guy from the Ticos. Again, and oh, by the way, shout out again if I haven't mentioned to Chocolate Man in Thailand. I met you on the beach the other day uh, running there in Jong Tien. So you guys can watch his channel, Chocolate Man in Thailand Live. And you'll actually see me running on the beach there in one of the videos or whatever. And also shout out to uh, Mr. C from uh, the Track Patrol podcast. There's a shout out. Check my channel anyway. You'll see the video with uh, the lean gave me a plug as well as he did as well too. Thank you for you guys' support. Thanks for watching Totico's, Indian Girls, The Shimmy Show, White Girl Cops, and all my other great projects. All right. So stay tuned and there's more on the way. All right. Signing out now. Clicking off. Bye. Here's a guy that was just so much fun to talk to, uh, Shimmy. Now, Shimmy is the guy from Totico's. Um, wonderful site. Uh, it's based in the DR. Just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. big butt Dominicans. I always brag about it. Like, I've said this so many times, you know. I brag about it so much. A wonderful <laughs> site. So, um, have you been able to check out some of the content there? Uh, actually, uh, he's he's very into his work. I mean, he's yes. very um, focused, and he knows his his niche also. Uh, um, okay, it's Dominicans are very pretty, so it's oh, uh, yeah. it's the best thing you can ever uh, take kind of a advantage of their pretty body, pretty face, uh, whatever you take, it's pretty. So uh, uh, his uh, his idea to start, he, he I think 15 years ago, he started uh -huh. working yeah, on, on Toticos, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he's uh, still doing a great job. How we doing? Hi, Bobby. My name is Ashley, I'm 19. 19 years old. Yeah. Yeah, show me your eyes. Take off your glasses, your lentils. <laughs> Beautiful. And who's my friend. Hi, my name is Rihanna. I'm 18 years old. Totico's.com. Welcome to South Swat Land, the happy hour with Dominican girls. Let your fucking money shine. Hi. Hey. I brought you the pillow you needed. Ah, uh, perfect. Come on in. Come on in. Come on. Um, I'm not really supposed to come in. Oh, uh, yeah, hotel policy, right? Yeah. But, uh, come on, come on, you can come in. Just for a minute, just for a minute, please.